So you probably think you already uncovered a lot of hidden secrets and things around The Sims. Especially if you followed my channel on the journey of Sims lore and mystery discoveries. But what if I told you we haven't even scratched the surface yet? Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we'll be investigating 10 hidden creepy features you probably didn't know about within The Sims games. As Halloween approaches, I wanted to do something spooky again. Let me know if you uncovered some of these already and which one you find creepiest. But before we get into it, today's video is possible thanks to Opera GX. By now, you know what Opera GX is. It's only the best free gaming browser out there. From allowing you to have integrated social media channels to importing your previous browser settings, there's nothing Opera GX can't do. Except maybe for finding out if Don or the Caliente sisters had something to do with Bella's abduction. It can, however, fix your lag and FPS drop. When you game, Opera GX helps you enhance your experience by getting rid of lag while you play your game and listen to music. Playing The Sims while listening to music, looking up chocolate cake recipes and trying to find out what happened to Bella Goth? No problem, the built-in GX control panel lets you limit any amount of CPU or RAM that you're willing to have the browser use. It can also limit your network bandwidth used by the browser to gain performance in games or streams. What other browser lets you fully customize it as good as Opera GX? You can customize it with particular themes, wallpapers and colors. I have mine set to this really trippy wallpaper of Saul Goodman, but you can change it to anything you like. There's a vast wallpaper add-ons page. You can also stay up to date with the latest releases, best deals and gaming news with GX Corner. Also, there's loads of free games that Opera selects personally and you can often find real gems. You can also see upcoming game releases in the release calendar. And of course, let's not forget that Opera GX is also on mobile and you can easily be connected to the desktop version. If you want a better experience gaming and you don't have Opera GX, then go. go! Download it for free via the link in the description or the comments. Okay, now back to the video. Make sure to get your snacks ready, let me know what you're having in that snack report, and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. There are a few hidden lots within The Sims 2 and its expansion packs that are hard to find or get into. Some are to do with hobbies and free time, which you can access once you develop skills in a particular hobby, or in university when you become a secret society member. However, there's one particularly creepy lot that isn't accessible by gameplay. When you select Belladonna Cove as your preferred neighborhood to play in, you wouldn't think there is anything hidden within it. The intro for Belladonna Cove doesn't really include it, it misses it by just a bit. Everything is within eye level and right there for you to choose and begin your Sims' journey. However, if you press tab on your keyboard and have a look around, in the corner of the map by the bridge, you will see a creepy little hut on a road closed off on both sides. What is that? Does it house anyone? Who is it for? As a kid, I tried a bunch of different things to get into it, selecting the Sim I wanted to play with and then pressing tab and clicking, but nothing ever worked. Later on though, I found that you can access it by changing some numbers within the camera files. I was always paranoid that I would mess up my game somehow, even if I backed up my files, so I just used this camera mod to be able to easily access the hut. Once in, I had a look around at this creepy little easter egg. The house is suspended on two spiral staircases and the ground looks as if there are chicken feet marks on it. Inside, there are two floors. The first floor has a small kitchenette and reading nook, and the second floor has a bed, a small wardrobe, and a bathroom. Many didn't get the reference, however, for the Slavs and us Eastern Europeans, it was very clear what this hut hinted to. The chicken leg hut is a clear reference to Baba Yaga's hut. Baba Yaga is an old supernatural being, part of Slavic folklore. She is portrayed as an old, ugly witch, hence the word Baba, meaning old woman or grandmother, in Serbo-Croatian, Bosnian, Macedonian, Bulgarian, and Romanian. I grew up in Romania, so I often heard stories about her as a child, all of which were terrifying. Baba Yaga had a hut deep within the forest, which stood on chicken legs. 
Many in need would end up lost and stumble across her hut looking for help. However, she would rarely help and almost always hurt them somehow, either by eating or imprisoning them. This is such a cool but creepy Easter egg within Belladonna Cove. This neighborhood was shipped with The Sims 2 apartment life, where they first introduced witches after The Sims making magic. So it's a creative way of having a witchy surprise for us to discover. The next hut is actually in Pleasant View. Yes, Pleasant View. The one neighborhood you probably played over and over and yet missed this tiny, tiny house. This is accessible by gameplay, so it's not really a little Easter egg like the Baba Yaga hut. However, to me, it's still incredibly creepy. If you didn't know about this one, it'll be hard for you not to spot the next time you play in Pleasant View. This neighborhood is quite big, and of course it brought along the best lore we ever had in The Sims games. But from all that spotlight given to Bella and her mystery, Don and his ladies, Skip's mystery and Brandy's struggle, and the Calientes and their shenanigans, some of us overlooked this little cottage. Well, this uh, room with a roof, really. From the Brokes trailer, you needn't travel far, as the aforementioned place is right up the road, hidden by a couple of pine trees and shrubbery. It's sometimes marked by the rainbow. And fine, some of you avid players might have seen it already, so what's so creepy, you might ask? Well, have you been inside yet? First off, it's pretty much empty. There is no bed, and the shower seems to be outside. Of course, this is the poorer area of the neighborhood where Brandy lives and you have the option of buying the trailer next to hers. But to me, it just seems a little creepy. Who would this be for? Who would even fit here? Maybe this is for Don after he becomes bankrupt and tries to run from all the women whose hearts he broke. Okay, now thankfully this next one has never happened in my game. There is a glitch within the nanny NPC where a nanny will steal your baby. Now, of course we're all familiar with some of the nannies being cruel or neglectful to our sim children, where we have some of them pick the baby up when they're hungry, only to put them down again and go watch TV whilst the baby cries desperately. You know, as you do. <laughs> Some nannies just want to watch you and your children suffer, so they cause a fire, run out of your house without saving your kids, whilst it all burns to a crisp. And while you're losing your mind in the bathtub. We all know what really needs to happen here. And yet, none of those seem as creepy as one of these unreliable sims stealing your infant. They just walk off the lot. Like they just ended their shift looking after their baby in a stranger's house. The goal. <laughs> Again, thankfully this never happened to me, but I say watch your sims is back. You never know when one of these malicious little pests will turn on you. Some of you might be unfamiliar with Glenda or Gordon the Ghosts. Both NPCs, their first appearance being in The Sims Making Magic. They appear when your Sims cast the Spectral Spouses spell on the Electro's spooky laboratory stage, and they will fly around your Sim if they have a high logic skill. If the Sim has medium skill, the Ghosts won't obey them. If your Sim has no logic skill, they won't show up at all. They also gave you some magic coins, Magic Town's currency. Now for the extra creepy part. A bit of digging uncovers that two creators by the names of Numenor and Lyric Lee found this painting hidden within the game files in The Sims 2, where clearly it depicts Glenda and Gordon when they were alive. What is this painting's purpose? Why is the file hidden? I guess it'll remain a mystery. Speaking of hidden files, there was another hidden object as well. A broken snow globe showing Bella and Mortimer Goth holding hands. This particular one was found by a creator named Yenvar, but Numenor then turned it into a working package. Again, why was this hidden? 
Somebody took the time to make a working mesh and texture for it, just to abandon it within the game files? Strange. In The Sims 2, once all sims in your household are dead, the time is paused, you lose control of live mode, and a dialogue box appears called the finale. Depending on the situation you have been left with, there are a few ones you could get. However, if you go out of your way to kill all of your sims within the household, the game will throw this one at you. If the point of playing The Sims 2 was to kill off all of your sims, then you would be the world champion. But unfortunately, the way things stand now, The Sims 2 is still a life simulator. You could actually exit the lot without saving and maybe try this household again. Or if you were trying to kill your sims, and we aren't saying you were, then feel free to move another family into the slot. Basically mocking you for having killed all your sims. This copy breaks the fourth wall, like many of other dialogues within the game. But this one is different to me for some reason. It makes me feel guilt for murdering my pixel people, and also makes me feel watched. So your sim has finally embarked on the journey to pursue their dream, the athletic career. You climb that career ladder until you reach level 4 or 5, and then you see it. The white bus. The white bus is basically a recolor of the usual yellow school bus. However, while the normal yellow school bus only has the driver in it, the white bus also has these two dummies. Not real sims, but dummy sims that only exist as texture, who also closely resemble children from The Sims. One of them is sitting at the front, and the other in the middle. If this wasn't creepy enough, these dummy children are legless. There's also these boxes, all the way at the back, packed tightly next to one another. But that's not really creepy, I mean, athletes do need to pack their equipment. So why are these dummies legless? Where are the school bus dummies? Honestly, this is cursed if you ask me. A user going by the name of Egon VM on this forum post listed a few things they found creepy in The Sims. And interestingly enough, I haven't thought of doing this, so technically it is hidden. So I set out to get it done. I booted The Sims 3 and removed every household in Sunset Valley. Now, mind you, the process itself is creepy enough. It took me a good five minutes to remove and delete all households but it might take even longer depending on your machine. The results were, let's just say, super creepy. And at night, it's even worse. If you were to get a mod that would kill all the lights, it would add even more to the abandoned look of the town. Like Econ VM said, some townies or sims like tattoo artists or random taxi drivers do spawn randomly. But there's no one else around. The only sim I left was Agnes Crumplebottom, and I essentially made her loner dreams come true. But it still creeped the shit out of me, so if you're trying to spook yourself or your friends this Halloween, give this one a go. Together, or alone I should say. Are you even a true Sims fan if you didn't know about this next one? As you might know, or might not, it's okay, I'm not actually judging. A lot of pre-made sims have names that are puns about death. We know Olive Spectre in The Sims 2 has a graveyard of peculiar sims whose murders she may or may not have been involved in. Like her name, Spectre, Olive is thought to be a killer, claiming all sorts of victims. Some of these victims have very strange names. One is called Rigor Mortis, a play on the words Rigor Mortis, which is a phenomenon that happens after death when a body's muscles stiffen due to chemical changes in their myofibrils. Another is Earl E. Demise, also a play on the words early demise, meaning the sim died earlier than they should have. For unknown reasons, of course. There is also Tim Lee Demise, a play on timely demise. Clearly, Olive thought this guy deserved his demise in a timely manner. Euthanasia is also there, and a play on euthanasia, the practice of ending the life of a patient to limit their suffering. I wonder if Hugh was truly suffering. 
When in a neighborhood, you can sometimes see the hot air balloon. In here, two figures can be spotted. Some say that it looks like missing mother of two, Bella Goth, and her deceased brother, Michael. Others say Bella was actually abducted by this mysterious other figure, and she's stuck on this hot air balloon with them. Then you have some saying it's an ode to her and Michael, who are now dead, but their ghosts still haunt the neighborhoods. However, the characters look a lot like Dreamboat and Blonde Bombshell, who are townies from Sims Hot Date. So this can't be more than just an easter egg, right? Okay, the sim is cursed. Not as a pre-made sim who has the most corrupted game files of any other pre-made. He is missing most of his character file, having no age, skills, memories, interests, aspiration, personality, or genetics, and is supposed to be dead. However, considering the flags to mark him as dead are also missing, he is still alive. His character files contain remains of data that was part of an earlier stage of development for the game, but these are not compatible with the final game code released. If he is spawned, which I don't recommend as this could break your game, he will behave like a baby even though he appears to be an adult. Interestingly, all of Spectre remembers Nut's death, however, Nut's grave is not present. Theories of fans say that Nut was allegedly supposed to be buried in Olive's garden, but due to changes from the early development of the game, he was removed in later stages. From this screenshot released by SimGuru Lindsay back in 2015, she shows Olive Spectre's grave's layout. People theorize that Burgess's grave to the far left was where Nut's grave was supposed to be. There is a sim called Burgess Smith, however, he's a fire brigade in Desiderata Valley. No one knows why he is in the game files, why he doesn't have any personality, or why he was kept at all. And last but not least, prank calls in the first sims game. Not exactly hidden, but this particular one was rare. This was so creepy. As a kid, I really didn't know what was happening half the time whilst playing The Sims. So this really stuck with me. Do you guys also get these weird, creepy, unsettling vibes from playing the first Sims game? Let me know in the comments. Alright guys, there you have it. 10 hidden creepy features you probably didn't know about. If you did uncover some of these on your own, let me know. Also, let me know which one is your favorite. I would like to thank my SoulSoul channel members, Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons, Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, Aurora Grimm, ML, Hannah, Shelby Hill, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Elizabeth Lindloff, Nathan Lim, Sabrina, Adele Isted, and Alice Wilde. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.